Hey YouTube, Mike Howell here for Naps, New Age Pipe Smokers. How the hell are y'all doing today? Hope you're doing well. Another hot one for me today. About 92 outside here in Illinois with a heat index of 106 right now at a 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Benton will get a little hotter before uh, the day is through. So today, I'm smoking something that's pretty new to me, and it's absolutely delicious, uh, Cornell and Deal Chenay's Cake. It's really good. I'm a bit of a Perique uh, freak, so this is right up my alley. It's a... Uh, Pretty nice looking crumble cake. Pretty standard. You can see the all the different components well represented in there. It's Virginia's and Perique. So Chenay's cake is uh, named after a man named Pierre Chenay. And uh, figured this gives me a good reason to uh, talk about Perique. Because Pierre Chenet is the man who gave us uh, what we know of today as Perique. For those of you who don't know, Perique is a... Uh, it is a type of tobacco, but it's also a process. Sort of like Cavendish is a process. Original Perique was made from a varietal of burley that is only grown in St. James Parish and processed there in Louisiana. They, uh, they brought some other elements in because uh, Perique was almost a dying breed for a while. But it's still manufactured in the same way that it has been for all this time. So Pierre Chenet Man, this uh, man, this blend is delicious. Pierre Chenet, in 1824, um, started the process for what we know of today as Perique. He had seen Native Americans uh, fermenting tobacco in hollowed out logs in a process very similar to what he developed. And he was able to adapt that to, uh, to his own methods. Basically, the tobacco is harvested, hung, and then twisted up in bundles and stuffed into whiskey barrels, where it's put under pressure with these big jack screws, and it squeezes all the juices out of the tobacco. And then the leaves are allowed to ferment in their own juices for usually a year is the total. Every couple months or so during the process, they'll take the leaves out of the barrels, pull them apart, let them breathe a little bit, then repack them, put them back in the barrels, and put them back under pressure. The end result of this after a year is the delightful stuff we all know is Perique. It's almost black, very, very dark. It's got... The, the smell would absolutely offend the heck out of anybody. If you smell a bag of straight Perique, then you don't know what it is. The thought is, oh my god, like, who would smoke this? It smells like musty feet disgustingness. But when you add it to Virginia or Burley, it, the taste is amazing. It's almost like spicy stewed plums. Yep, like a big pot of plums with jalapenos in them or something stewing on a fire. It's a... It's a really versatile leaf because you can put it with a bunch of different things and the result is different with whatever components you add it to 
with Virginia's, it amps up the sweetness of the uh, Perique, and you get a lot of those dark fruit, um, dark sweetness notes, especially with age. Uh, with Burley's, it tends to complement the robustness of the Burley's and the spiciness of the Perique. They blend together really well. Perique almost uh, left us for a little bit until the uh, current manufacturer purchased purchased the whole operation and incentivized the uh, farmers with a little extra cash. They also brought in some different varietals of leaves from other areas of the country. And processed them in the same way as traditional Perique and blended it with traditional Perique. And uh, I believe, I could be wrong, so correct me in the comments if I'm being a dumbass, but I believe that's where Acadian Perique came from. And Shanae's cake, <clears throat> I know this is a part of the Cornell and Deal Cellar series, so it's designed to be aged, but man, straight out of the tin, this stuff is really amazing. I uh, had the first bowl of it I ever tried this morning after breakfast, and this is the second. definitely not disappointing. I don't know what the exact ratio is in here of uh, Perique to Virginia's, but I think it's pretty high. There's definitely a lot of Perique. The tin note, most uh, Virginia Periques, you can't really smell the Perique as much in the tin note. It kind of fades in with the strong smell of Virginia's, but this one definitely, you can smell that tangy, sweet Virginia smell, but man, that, uh, that musty fermented smell of the Perique really uh, comes through also, so that says to me that there's a lot of it in here. And the, uh, the spice and the strength of the Perique definitely intensifies as the bowl goes down. Really enjoyable. I bet even sticking this in the cellar for a year would probably do some amazing things to it. But in five years or ten, I can't imagine how delicious this would be. Definitely going to have to pick up some more of this stuff and sock it away. Let the years do something to it. Really nice and dry for a crumble cake too. Normally I have to leave those out to dry a little bit because I tend to have a little bit of a fast cadence so when uh when they're too wet I end up with just the pipe is just flooded out with moisture and gross but this I pulled out and crumbles up real nicely right in the pipe and smokes like a dream. Delicious Perique filled dream. Well, that's my little informal talk on Perique and uh, thoughts on Shanae's cake. I'm a big Cornell and Deal fan in general anyway. Most of their, at least their non-aromatic blends I've tried are pretty good. Not much on aromatics in general. They have a couple that I like. But when it comes to their vapors, they, they pretty much all knock it out of the park for me. Well, I guess I'm going to get out here and get back to work. 
on dealing with the sunshine. I hope you all have a wonderful day, good afternoon. And, uh, I know a lot of times as pipe smokers, if we're smoking out in public, sometimes we get compliments, sometimes complaints. I found more compliments. People talk about how their grandfather or their, or their uncle or somebody they knew as a child smoked a pipe. And they're almost always pleasant, you know, pleasant anecdotes and experiences. But every once in a while, I'll get someone who comes with, why do you smoke? Why do you smoke a pipe? Why, why, why? There's only one real answer to the question, why? Why is a crooked-ass letter? And you ain't never gonna straighten it out. So, have a good one, y'all.